Good day, Great Tens. Welcome to this lesson on a beautiful Monday afternoon. I know it's Monday, but still, it's a pretty day. Um, today, we're going to be doing some trigonometry. Um, I would like to welcome you again to these classes. If you haven't already joined, I'd like to urge you to join our to enable maths Great Ten class simply so that you can email me and tell me if there's certain sections you'd like to go through. It can be totally anonymous. I don't mind who you are. All I want to do is be able to answer your questions. Okay, so feel free to email us. Okay, now we're going to be doing trigonometry, but to start trigonometry, you need to understand a little bit of similarity. So that sounds strange, but trigonometry is all about ratios of sides, and similarity is where those ratios of sides come from. So let me explain a little bit more. Similarity of triangles. We can say that two triangles are similar when their corresponding angles are equal. In other words, if you've got triangle ABC and angle DEF, if this angle here is the same size as that angle, and that angle there is the same size as that angle there, and this angle here is then obviously the same size as that angle there, then I can say these triangles are similar. And what does that mean? That means that I can take this triangle here, the little one, and I can scale it up. I can scale it up to be the same size and cover ABC, or I could take ABC and I could scale it down and it would cover FDE. Also, if I said to you that, and it's probably covered in the next couple of slides, but I'm going to tell you now anyway, if FD is one unit long, let's say it's one centimeter, and AC is two centimeters, okay? If I then know that these triangles are similar, if I then know that this is three centimeters, well then I know, well look, two centimeters is double one centimeter. So since this side corresponds to that side, look, this little angle is equal to that little angle there, and this little angle here is equal to this angle here. Therefore, this side corresponds to that side there. Then I can say, well, that's three. Well, this is one times two to get two. So it's going to be three times two. So this is going to be six centimeters. So we can tell the ratio of the sides if we know the two triangles are similar, okay, which is quite useful. So like we said, if two triangles are similar, the corresponding sides are proportional in length. In other words, like I said, if this is going to be X long, then because this line here is proportional to this line, Okay, let's do it again. This angle is equal to this angle. Um, this angle is equal to this angle. And that angle there is equal to that angle there. Then we can say, well, X, this is X and this could be, and this is 2X. Then, then I could possibly say, well, in that case, whatever this is, this is going to be double that as well. So this is Y, that's going to be 2y, look, because there's an x and a funny squiggle, and this is an x and a funny squiggle, so that side there corresponds to that side. And then finally, I could say, well, in that case, that line there has to be double whatever this purple line is. So if this is P for purple, then this has to be double the purple. And it's not always double. I'm just using double because I started it. It could be three times bigger or four times bigger or half or quarter, depending on which way you're going. But the point is that they're proportional in length, which means as the one goes up, the other one goes down. Okay, so now we can look in at these triangles, okay? And this is an example, obviously, we've got triangle D, F and E, and G, K and H. And before we say anything about these sides, let's talk about whether or not they are similar. Do you agree that angle H, oh, angle H equals angle E, right? Because they're both 90 degrees, right? You also have angle G equals angle D, which is 30 degrees, because it was given. And we've got angle K equals angle F, which equals 60 degrees, and that's given. So therefore, we can say that triangle GKH is similar. It's actually not signed for similarity, sorry. That's congruency is similar to triangle D, F, E, okay? And you have to get them in the same order. So angle G is 30 degrees and angle D 
D is 30 degrees, so it's G and D first. Then angle F is 60 degrees and angle K is 60 degrees. So therefore it has to be K and F. And then obviously H and E are both 90 degrees, so therefore they have to both be in the same place as well. So what does that mean? That means that the ratio of this side is equal over that side is equal to the ratio of this side, for example, over this side. They're in proportion. Okay, so I could say, for example, that DF over GK is equal to FE over kh. Now, that might seem a bit complicated, so let me put it in numbers for you. Let's pretend that this is three units long, and let's pretend this is one unit long, and let's pretend this is, I don't know, two units long. It's not, but let's just pretend, okay? Then do you agree that if this here is three, and then that was going to be, what we could say then is, um, then we need the ratio to be, we, what we're saying now is, hang on, sorry, I just realized I need to give you another angle. Then, if this was, let's say I tell you that this is nine units. I know it doesn't look it, but let's pretend that that's nine units. Then I could say, well, DF is three units long. GK is nine units long, so it's three over nine. That's the same ratio as F E to K H. K H. Okay. So what is 3 over 9? 3 over 9 is the same as 1 over 3. I'm just dividing both 3 into both. 3 and 9. Okay. So the ratio is 1 to 3. Right. But now we've been given that F E is 1 unit. So that's 1 unit. So can we work out what KH is? Well, yes, we know that KH is going to be equal to 3 because if F is 1, KH is going to be 3 or 3 times what F e is. So therefore, that's going to be 1 over 3. Okay, let's do another one just to show you. Let's say that we've got, okay, let's say we're trying to work out what GH is, okay? So let's say we've worked this, we do it out. We know that F e over kh is equal to 1 over 3. We know that because we've just worked it out, okay? The ratio of Fe to kh is 1 over 3, right? Or you could write it another way, kh equals 3 times as long as Fe, okay? kh is 3 times as long as Fe. Now, I want gh. I want gh. So let's write it up there. So we need to do it in the same order. So we're going to go from this triangle to this triangle. So we're going to go DE over GH. GH. Because that's the same order. And it has to have the same ratio. So it equals 1 over 3. That's the ratio. Right? The ratio. But DE is 2 units. So therefore it's going to be 1 over 3 times by 2 over GH. Do you understand that? In other words, this is the ratio. My ratio is that GH is 3 times as big as DE. Maybe I should write like that. 3 G GH equals 3 times as big as DE, right? But if DE is 2, then what is GH? GH is going to have to be 6. So therefore we know that this is 6 units long. And those of you that know your special triangles 360 and 90 and know that the ratio is not 3, 1, 2, it's fine. I was just using this as an example for some clarity. Okay, I know and we will discuss special triangles in a minute and then we'll talk about the length of the sides. Okay, this is just to explain about similarity. So what does it say? It says for specific angle, the ratios of each of the triangles stay the same. So if the hypotenuse gets longer, so do the length of the other two sides. Everything increases and decreases in proportion. And probably the easiest way for me to do this is to show you a triangle that looks like this, okay? And that's a right angle triangle. And I apologize for the non-straight lines. Okay, let's call this A, B, 
C. Let's say I draw a line that is parallel to AB. Parallel to AB. If this is parallel to AB, do you agree that that angle now is the same as that angle there because they are corresponding angles? And this dude here is equal to that angle there. So what we're saying is that because these triangles are similar, look here, that angle is equal to that angle, that equals that angle, and that angle is common. Therefore, this is going to be, let's call this DE. This new triangle, DEC, is similar triangle. A, B, C. It's exactly the same angles, they're just it's smaller. Do you agree that that length there, that line is going to go down the same rate as that, okay? Which means that this is also going to go down in the same proportion as that, okay? Or let's put it that way. This is going to go down in the same proportion as that. Let me draw another one right now. Let me go for over here. So what's happened? I've again drawn a line. I basically cut this red triangle down further, okay? So again, this angle is equal to that angle. This angle is equal to this angle. So do you agree that this is in proportion again? But all that's happened, because they're similar, it's in proportion. So this bit here has to go down the same rate as this bit, okay? And the blue is exactly the same proportion smaller than the red. Okay, so that is what they're saying. They're saying if the hypotenuse gets longer, the both the sides get longer. If it gets shorter, then both the other sides get shorter as well. So in other words, you could think of it as first we started with the black triangle and then we ended up with the, oh, that did not work. Um, it's fine, I can draw it in. Then we ended up with the red triangle. Okay, do you see that? Okay, and then we decreased, we got rid of the red triangle and we ended up with what? Just the blue triangle. And every time the angle stayed the same and the sides were proportionately smaller. Okay, do you understand that? Okay, so now we can use this proportionality and similarity in introducing our using our trig ratios. So let's talk about Sarkatoa. So there was this Greek dude and he realized that there was this thing called similarity that he realized that if he took this triangle, exactly this triangle, similar triangle, and he cut down and he said, okay, fine, this is ABC. I'm just redrawing it here so that I can draw, draw all over it and then we can erase it. This is little A, this is little C, this is little B, okay, and that's 90 degrees. If he drew a line similar to what I did, but let's do it differently, let's say he drew a line this way so that this was parallel to this. Then this is 90 degrees and that angle there is equal to this angle, okay? Then what he realized was that the ratio of this side to that side Okay, in other words, you realize that the ratio of C dashed over B dashed, which is where this is B dashed, and this is C dashed, the red C and the blue, red B, okay, is the same as the ratio of, is the same as the ratio of C over B. It works out to be the same. Also, if this now, this little red side here is A dashed, okay, that's the length now, we call it A dashed. If that's a dashed over B dashed, for example, it would have the same proportion as A over B, the same proportion. Okay, so in other words, if this was, let's call this X and this Y, if C dash was X and B dash was Y, if normal C went up to 2x, then b would have to be 2y. Do you see what I'm saying? So they go up in the same ratio, they come down in the same ratio. And then what he did was he realized that that meant that there was a specific ratio that was given a specific number to that angle, to that size angle, or a specific number to this size angle over there or that size angle there which happens to be 90. And he worked it out and then he realized that there was a trigonometric ratio and you guys don't need to know anything more about that other than the fact that he's allocated 
this Greek letter or this Greek upper end sign and he said sine of theta is always going to be the opposite side over the hypotenuse side okay cos of theta is always going to be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse side and tan of theta is always going to be the opposite side over the adjacent side okay so there's a funny fancy upper end thing that happens there and if you're Back in the day of your grandparents or great grandparents, you'd have special um, books that would help you work out these different upper ends. But we've got calculators, so we just put that in a calculator and life is good. Okay, so that is where Sokotoa comes from. Sine is opposite of our partners, cos is adjacent to our partners, and tan is opposite over adjacent. And you need to understand that the angle opposite the hypotenuse, opposite the 90 degrees is always the hypotenuse, right? And then the, it depends on whether you're using A or B. If I'm using angle A, the a side next to angle A that's not the hypotenuse is going to be the adjacent. Because adjacent means next to, right? Adjacent means next to. And obviously then the other angle next to. The other angle is the opposite angle. I know some of you have been taught silly old hens cackle and howl till old age. And to be honest, I was taught something about cows and for the life of me, I can't even remember because soccer terror just works for me so well that I don't even remember what I got taught. Okay, it doesn't matter what you learned as long or learn as long as you understand how to use it. So, let's look at an example. It's the best way to find out if you know how to use it. Okay, it says find x in the diagram in three different ways. And it says you do not have to find, calculate the actual value of x, just write down the appropriate ratio for x. So here is x. And Sokotoa only works for right angle triangles, by the way. I meant to tell you, it only works for right angle triangles. We've got other ratios that we use for non right angle triangles. So, the very first thing that you guys are going to do when you get into a trig questionnaire situation or test, um, Sokotoa is write down Sokotoa. Shame. Sokotoa. Okay, you're going to write that down immediately or whatever you need to write down, like silly old hens, but you write it down, okay? Because I guarantee you that, and don't write it down during the 10 minute reading time. If you're given 10 minutes reading time, write it down the minute you can legally write. I guarantee you that there's going to be somewhere in the middle of some test between now and grade 12 where you're suddenly going to go blank and go, ooh, is sine theta adjacent of our partners or opposite of our partners? And if you get it wrong, it's going to be a miserable day for you. So rather just write down Sagatoa and then life is easy. Okay, so we want X and they want three different ways. So yes, sine, cos and tan. So obviously we're going to apply all of these. Okay, so let's start with the sine theta. Before we do that, let's just work out our sides. Do you agree that this is the hypotenuse? Because it's opposite the 90 degrees, right? This is the adjacent because it's next to the angle. And this is the opposite side. This is the opposite side. Okay, right. So now let's think about this. For sine of x, sine of x is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. Opposite is 4 and hypotenuse is 5. So sine of x is equal to 4 over 5. Okay, or we can say the cos of x equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be 3 over 5. And then we've got tan of x is equal to opposite over adjacent. Opposite 4 over adjacent, which is 3. 4 over 3. So that's really nice. You can see that you can use all three of the ratios to get your actual angle. Right, now let's talk about reciprocals. Now reciprocals are the inverses, the inverses of Sokotoa. Okay, so the best way to write this is, okay, well we know that Sokotoa is sine is equal to opposite 
over hypotenuse. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan is opposite over adjacent. And we're just going to call these theta, randomly call these theta. Okay, so let's pretend that this is angle theta just for fun. Okay, now these are your normal ratios. Okay, the reciprocals are the inverses. So it's the same as saying 1 over sine theta, 1 over cos theta, or 1 over tan theta, but they've got special names. The opposite of sine theta is called cosecant, so it's cosec theta. The opposite of cos theta is secant theta, okay? And the opposite of cartan is cot theta. And it's just exactly that, it's the opposite. So if theta is opposite of hypotenuse, then cosecant is going to be hypotenuse over opposite. If secant, I mean, if cos is adjacent of hypotenuse, then secant is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. And if tan is opposite of adjacent, then cot is actually going to be adjacent over opposite. Okay, I just need to do a little side here just so that you guys can understand this because it upsets me that you guys know, don't even know this. Sine theta is actually short for sine theta. Yes, you haven't lost much. Sorry, sine theta. Okay, that's just terrible. Let me just erase that. Sine theta. If you guys are science, it's a bit like the mole and the mole. Okay, right. Sine theta. Cos theta is actually the short for cosine theta, okay? And tan theta is actually the short tan for tangent theta. I'm just telling you that because of where these names came from. So the inverse of the sine theta is actually the cosecant. Okay, the inverse of this is called the cosecant, which is going to just be cosec. The inverse of cos or cosine is secant, which is just going to be sec. And the opposite of tangent is cotangent, which is tan, I mean cot. There you go. So now you know where the names actually come from. You don't need to know this. You don't need to prove it. You don't have to show off anywhere. Just to show you where these things come from, because a lot of students struggle with the fact that this is cos and this is cosec, and they get they think that the cosec is the inverse of the cos. Okay, that's not how it works, okay, because this is actually not cos. It's actually cosine. Okay, because these two are co-ratios of each other. That's where that comes from. And cosec and sec are co-ratios of each other, and tan and cot are co-ratios. And what are co-ratios? Another just an aside. Co-ratios are numbers that add up to uh, are add up to 90 degrees. Okay, so co-ratios are things that work within a 90 degree angle. So that's why these two are co-ratios, these two are co-ratios, and these two are co-ratios. That's where their names come from. So it's sine and cosine, cosecant and secant, and tan and cotangent. Okay, right. So that's where the names come from. But anyway, besides that, they are also reciprocals. So for example, if I said that sine of theta is opposite of our partners, which is a a over C, its reciprocal, which is cosec, is going to be C over A. There you go. And I didn't even have to work it out. I just had to flip them upside down. Okay. Right. So let's look at an example. If I said to you, I want, again, we're not using our, our, compute, our calculators yet. We're going to call this angle X. And we're going to say, and that angle Y, okay? So we're going to say, right, do you agree that you can say sine of X? Okay, remember that this, now we're looking at X, right? In okay, case so this is the hypotenuse, this is the adjacent, because it's next to it, and this is the opposite. And we've written down here, Sakatoa. So do you agree sine of X is going to be opposite of hypotenuse, up opposite over hypotenuse, which is 30 over 34. 30 over 34, okay? 
So what is that saying? That's saying that if I'm being given a specific angle x, the ratio of the sides will always be 30 over 34, which I could actually bring down to 15 over 17, by the way. But that's the ratio, okay? Cosecant of x is going to be 34 over 30, which is 17 over 15. Okay, do you understand that? Similarly, if I was going for Y, let's say we're going for Y, if I go cos of Y, cos of Y is going to be adjacent over, because now it's this one. Let's change, change colors, change colors, change color. Okay, this now, if we're looking for this, do you agree that this is the adjacent side and this is the opposite side? And this now, cos of y is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's again going to be 30 over 34. Okay. So it's inverse, which in this case is secant of y, is going to be 34 over 30. Okay. So you get the grips with it. Let's try another example. Now we've got 14, 50, 48, and we've got s, r, and t. So again, let's say I want you to write... I want you to find three, three ratios to get S, but they must be the inverses, must be the inverses. And again, we're not we're looking to work it out. We're looking to just write them down like we did before. So again, I'm going to write Sa Katoa, but simply so that I can remember how to get the inverses. So the inverse of sine is going to be cosec of s, cosec of s, the inverse of cos is sec of s, and the inverse of tan is cot of s, okay. Now if that's the case, if we're looking for s, do you agree that this is going to be the opposite side? This is the hypotenuse and this is the adjacent side. Okay, so cosec is the inverse of sine. So if you struggle with this, you're welcome to write 1 divided by sine. And sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So it's opposite 14 over 50. So it's 14 over 50. But what do you do when you divide? You tip and time. So it's the same as 1 times by 50 over 14, which is just 50 divided by 14. And then what are we going to do? We're going to divide both the top and bottom with a common factor, so it becomes 25 over 7. There you go. Let's look at the secant of S. The secant of S is the inverse of cos. So that's going to be 1 divided by cos is adjacent over our part new, so it's 48 over 50. Okay, if we divide this by 2, we get 24 over 25, so you get 1 times by 25 over 24, which is just 25 over 24. And finally, if we look at cut, cut is the inverse, 1 divided by the tan, and tan is opposite over adjacent, so therefore it's 14 divided by 48, which is going to be 1 times 48 divided by 14. And then obviously we can divide both the top and bottom by 2. So we end up with 24 over 7. And that's as far as you can go, 24 over 7. Okay, so now let's look at how we can use our calculator to get answers. So the first thing you always have to do is make sure your calculator is in the degree mode. So, yeah, we've got our calculator and I've been using it already today. And what we want to do is always make sure it's in the degree mode. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're using an HP or a Sharp or a Casio, you always, always want to make sure it's either got a capital D there at the top or you, oopsie, sorry. Or you basically want to make sure that there's no R. There's no R over here because R is for radians. And if you start trying to do sine, cos, and tan in radians, you're going to get it all wrong because it's a totally different way of working out um, 
points around the circle. Okay, so let's just sign a 57 degrees. It's very easy. It doesn't matter what calculator you're using. You're going to sign a 57 and you just have to close the bracket equals and then it's 0 0.83867056798 etc 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 now obviously we don't want to write all this out and 90 percent of the time if they don't okay if they don't tell you round up to two decimal places but 90 percent of the time they'll tell you to round up to two decimal places in which case you look at this and you go well if i'm rounding off to two decimal places i need to look at the third decimal and the third decimal is an eight, which means that this is going to be rounded up and it becomes naught comma eight four, naught comma eight four. Okay, let's now do the next one. Okay, so cars of 24, so it's cars of 24, close the bracket, equals 0.9135 whatever so again we're looking at the third and we see oh that's actually really easy because that's less than five so it's naught comma nine one it's equal to naught comma nine one okay this one looks a little bit more complicated but that's only because it's got brackets again we're just practicing how to do this on our calculator so it's just going to be 14 let's try again 14 tan bracket Oh, it's already giving me a bracket, sorry. 38 plus 23, close bracket, equals. And the answer is 25.25666, whatever, whatever. Remember, we're looking to round off to two decimal places. So there's that six, which we use to round the five up. So it becomes 25.26 equals 25,26. And now this one's interesting. The reason it's interesting is because it's got this little squared here. And what this is really saying is sine of 36 all squared. So this is kind of a shortcut for writing, writing this out. And you wanted to have that shortcut because it's much easier to understand that than to have sine 36 squared. If you do that, you're not sure if the 36 is squared or if the whole of it's squared. Whereas if I put it in the middle, if I write sine squared 36, I know I mean the whole term. And then if I just want 36 squared, then I actually would write it like this. Okay, so it, it eliminates brackets really. So let's pop that into our calculator. So the best way to do this is actually to work out what sine 36 is first. You go sine 36 bracket equals, then you square it equals, and then you round it off and you see the five is bigger, so it goes 0 0.35. So that equals 0 comma 35. Hmm, not too bad here. Now we're trying to find the ratios of the reciprocal. Okay, so it's a little bit more complicated because now we are finding the ratios of the reciprocal. So do you agree that this is one over the secant? Cosecant is opposite of what? The cosecant is opposite of sine. So it's one over sine 30 degrees. This one, I might as well write it down, is one over secant is the opposite of cos. So this is one over cos 27 degrees. Oh, sorry. 27 degrees. And cut is one over tan of 45 degrees. Okay, so possibly the easiest way to do this is to work out what sine 30 is and then invert it. Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to go sine of 30 bracket equals a half. And then do you see that there's a button that says x to the negative 1? Which of course I can't find right this instant. Oh, there it is, right there. x to the negative 1. And you press equals and there you go. The negative 1 is just flipping it. It's finding the inverse. So that becomes then 2. Okay, let's try that again, but with the secant and the cos. So we go cos of 27 close bracket equals okay so that's cos of 27 and then I flip it okay and you get 1.12 so that becomes equals 1 comma 1 2 the other way of doing it of course is doing it the way you get exactly as it comes where it's 1 1 divided by 
Um, one divided by cos of 27, close bracket, equals, and there you go, 1.122. 1 um, okay, so there you go, it's 1.122. Right, now we've got tan 45. So tan 45 we're going to do on the calculator. So either way is fine. You can do it either way. It makes a difference whether you go one over cars or if you go work out cars 27 and do the inverse then. It really doesn't matter. It's actually what's easiest for you and your calculator. So one over tan 45. Okay, we'll do it the second way so that you guys can also see that again. So you get a fraction, you go to 1 and you go down and then you go tan of 45, close bracket, equals and you just get 1. So that equals 1. The only thing I would suggest grade 10 is that if your calculator is a little bit old fashioned and it doesn't have this fraction, then I would say stay away from the one divides. Work out the cos 27 and then invert. And all the calculators do that it's a little invert button, even if sometimes you have to get press shift to get to it, okay? Look for it. It's the x the minus 1. I'll tell you why, because sometimes it's a bit difficult to write out. I find that students make a mistake when they go 1 divided by bracket um, sine 30 bracket bracket equals and you get the answer but it can be a little bit more trickier than that I mean this is a very easy example what happens if there were multiple in, um, reciprocals that you had to work out so I would honestly suggest that you rather just work out the sine 30 then invert it to get the answer if you don't have the little fraction button on your calculator Right, now it says find the angle. Sine theta equals 0 0.5. So now we're trying to find the angle. Up to now, we've plugged the angle in. Now we want to find the angle. So if you look on your calculators, and this is the, one of the main reasons I actually bring calculator up on these computers, I mean on these lessons, is you can see that there's a second function sine. So it's sine to the minus 1. There's cos to the minus 1. And there's tan to the minus 1. Okay. That sine to the minus one actually stands for arc sine. Okay, you don't really need to know that again. Okay, but what it means is that we're going to find the angle. We're going to find the angle. So when you want to find the angle, you use the second function sine button, okay? So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go shift sine of 0.5 close bracket equals and we get 30 degrees there you go 30 degrees okay let's do the next one so you got shift cos 0.81234 whoopsie i did a few too many one two three four one two three four close bracket equals 29.927, remember we always do into two decimal places unless they tell us otherwise. So it's 29.93. So the angle theta is 29,93 degrees. And then finally tan. Okay, so tan is going to be shift tan 0.577 close brackets equals. And this one is 29.98 so we look now this one the reason i included this one is because a lot of my students will think okay we're rounding off to two decimal places and they go to yeah and they go well this nine will round up the four to a five and the five will round up the eight and the eight's going to round up no you're only looking at the third decimal and the third decimal is a four so therefore this is rounded down to an eight so it's 29.98 so therefore theta equals 29.98 0.98 degrees okay right now we've got a little bit more time left so i'm going to talk to you about special angles and special angle triangles i'm telling you now grade 10 you need them all the way up through to matric they are so important and along with Sokotoa, you are going to be drawing your special triangles on your piece of paper your exam paper your test paper the minute you're allowed to write and you're doing trigonometry as your test okay so paper two maths beginning of my paper two maths the minute you're allowed to write and any trigonometry test the minute you're allowed to write you get to write Sakatoa and then you're going to draw these special triangles okay so the first special triangle is actually this dude here 
okay? But I'm going to show you how we get it. So what they did was they took an equilateral triangle, an equilateral triangle. An equilateral triangle means that all three sides are equal, okay? And it also means that all three angles are equal. They're 60 degrees, 60 degrees, and 60 degrees. And then what they did was they dropped a line down the middle, dush, 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 so that this line was a perpendicular bisector, okay, perpendicular bisector. So now, if we look at this triangle here, okay, they allowed all three sides of the triangle to equal two units long, okay, all three sides are two units long. So therefore, this was two, this was two, and the whole of this was two, right? So now they've dropped the perpendicular down. This now is still two, okay? But this length here is half of it because this line here is a perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular is at 90 degrees and bisector splits it in half. So this is one in length, okay? So it's two and one. And now we need to find this side here, the, the the vertical component, okay? So what do we use? We use Pythagoras. This is the hypotenuse, okay? And this is one of the sides called X, and we want Y. So the rule is that X squared plus Y squared is equal to H squared in this case. So H is the square root of, no, we don't want H, sorry. We don't want H, we want Y. So we're going to go y equals the square root of h squared minus x squared. If x squared plus y squared equals h squared, do you agree that y squared equals h squared minus x squared, right? So y is the square root of h squared minus x squared. Which is the square root of h is 2. So it's 2 squared minus x, which is 1. So therefore, that becomes the square root of 2 squared is 4 minus 1, which is the square root of 3. So this length here is the square root of 3. So your special triangle, I'm just going to redraw it by drawing this side now. I'm going to draw this side over there, okay? This is 60 degrees. That is 90 degrees because of construction. This length here is 1 because it's half of this length here. This length is 2 because it's the full length. And this here is root 3. And this is 30 degrees. Okay, y angle sum of triangle. Do you agree? So for 30, 60, and 90 degrees. But that means that we can actually now say, well, therefore we've got special triangles and special angles. So what it means is that it doesn't matter how long your sides are, the ratio is always going to be the same. So if I have sine of 60 degrees, sine is, let's just do Sakatoa, sine of upper sine of 60 degrees is opposite. This is the opposite side. This is the hypotenuse. And this is the adjacent. Sine of 60 degrees is opposite of hypotenuse, which is always root 3 over 2. It doesn't matter if this is the teeniest triangle over here or a giant triangle that we've extended out. Okay, terrible drawing, but you know what I mean. Extend it out. It doesn't matter how small this triangle becomes or how giant it becomes, the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse opposite the angle of 60 degrees is always root 3 over 2. Cos of 60 degrees is always going to be the adjacent to the hypotenuse, so it's always going to be a ratio of a half. Okay, so this side here is always going to be a ratio of a half. This is going to be half of this. This is going to be half of that. This is going to be half of this, if you get it. And the tan is opposite over adjacent, which is going to, so tan of 60 degrees is always going to be root 3 
over 1, which is just root 3. Okay, so that is the ratio, and that is how your 60-degree triangle works. And we've just run out of time. So, grade 10s, please join me on Wednesday, and we'll carry on with trigonometry at exactly the same time. Have a great day.